there is a deadline quickly approaching for BlackRock, for Bitcoin. I want to talk about today, talk about how BlackRock is really trying to rob you of rich riches that we can't even comprehend right now and show you kind of what BlackRock does when they get into an asset class. If you don't mind, hit subscribe, turn on that bell notification so you can see future videos just like this one as soon as I make them. While you're down there, there's a link to Margex where you can long, short, trade all different kinds of cryptocurrency. I have been trading a bit. And as you can see, this is a good time to trade because there are just fluctuations. The price isn't really doing much in the short term for Bitcoin, just kind of bouncing back and forth, but you can make pretty decent money from that. I put on a Solana trade just a few days ago, made actually yesterday, and made about 24% over a very short time span. Now this has no KYC, no VPN, so they don't ask you your personal information. It's really simple to sign up. There's a deposit bonus too when you use this link underneath the video. And they're powered by TradingView, which is pretty awesome because it makes it really easy to um, manipulate the charts, look at different things, put up indicators and all that. So definitely check out that link underneath the video. Now, Bitcoin is moving up a bit here today. We know that there are a couple deadlines quickly approaching for Bitcoin. A lot of people are watching BlackRock they know BlackRock is trying to get this ETF approved. Uh, they said that it was a key priority for the company, but putting a lot of their PR behind it. Larry Fink, their CEO, is spending some of his valuable time talking about Bitcoin. Recently, he uh, did say too that he really likes Bitcoin. He thinks crypto will transcend any one currency. He thinks Bitcoin's a flight to safety. They also plan to seed their Bitcoin ETF with $10 million. They gave us a date that they are planning to do that, January 3, and it's 100 times larger than their October seeding of $100,000 as well. So they're 100xing their, uh, their allocation towards Bitcoin right now. But a lot of people don't realize they already have, uh, they already have a pretty large allocation towards Bitcoin or they have clients in on Bitcoin in a private trust. Some people from Bloomberg estimate that there are hundreds of millions of dollars in that already, which makes sense. I mean, they turned very bullish on Bitcoin after Larry Fink had been publicly very bearish. He'd said that it was an index of money laundering, pretty much sounding like a lot of other people that we know in traditional finance. And then he goes just a few years later, probably finds out that they can make a good amount of money from it. The market changed a little bit too, if you wanna be less cynical. And then he's so extremely bullish on it. Obviously, they have allocation towards Bitcoin before they start announcing all their plans for an ETF. And the company itself might not own Bitcoin, but they definitely own it for their clients. And I've talked about why it's so valuable for them, how much money they can make from this. I've done that in a different video, but I want to show you a little bit about what they do when they get into a market. And I'm not clickbaiting you by saying that they're trying to rob you of your Bitcoin. It's true, but let me play this video for you. It's really interesting looking at what BlackRock does when they get into a market and how they try to take over and steal resources. We economic hitmen have managed to create the world's first truly global empire. And it's basically a secret empire. We do it many ways, but, but, but principally, uh, we identify a country that has resources our corporations covet, like oil. Range a huge loan to that country from the World Bank or one of its sisters. The money never actually goes to the country. It goes to our own corporations to build the infrastructure projects in that country that help a few very wealthy people, but don't benefit the majority of the people who are too poor to buy electricity or have cars to drive on the highways, and yet they're left holding a huge debt that they can't repay. So we go back at some point and say, you know, you can't pay your debts. Give us a pound of flesh. Sell your oil real cheap to our oil companies. Vote with us on the next critical UN vote. Allow us to build a military base in your backyard. Something along these lines. And when it's a little bit different. They're talking about basically colonialization of different countries, but it's very similar. They're trying to make tons of money, take your assets take your uh, your commodities away from you. Bitcoin is a commodity in a lot of people's minds. And that's what they want to do with Bitcoin. They want to swallow up as much as possible. Also, they're not, they're not too um, angelic. I don't know if that's the best way to say it, but they're not too nice. Um, 
to just kind of let you come to that decision on your own. They're going to push clients there. They're going to push people to buy Bitcoin. This is from Larry Fink just a few years ago as well. Companies, uh, you have to force behaviors. And at BlackRock, we are forcing behaviors. I don't know if that was loud enough for you, but they are forcing behaviors. Now, they're specifically talking about like different ESG movements, uh, hiring women, that kind of stuff in their companies, but they are pushing people to do things. And some of that's probably good, right? Some of it is just checking a box. They are pushing people to do certain things that they want to make them money. So they are going to push people to buy Bitcoin. They're going to push everyone that they can to whatever's profitable for them. Now, keep in mind that this is a huge industry. It's not just BlackRock that's doing this. There are 12 different spot ETF applications in the U.S. They estimate um, there were about $85, billion, or $85 trillion in AUM uh, in like asset and wealth management. In 2016, 110 or 111 trillion by 2020, and they're going to be 145.4 trillion by 2025. BlackRock, obviously the largest or one of the largest uh, AUM out there, but they're just a piece of that bucket. And it continues to inflate because there's continuous technology inv- advancements, there's more value that's created, but also because dollars just go down. Uh, the fact is they just inflate um, and purchasing power deflate. So these assets are going to continue to go up and they go into something finite like Bitcoin. So I'm going to get to my point about how they're trying to rob you in a minute. But we already have a lot of other a lot of other companies that are buying Bitcoin right now. They're, they're not waiting for these ETFs to get approved. They're buying as much as they can. Michael Saylor, as I said earlier today, bought almost 15,000 Bitcoin for 615 million. We have whales that are buying hundreds of bitcoin every hour like this guy smashed by at six smashed by at 654 smashed by at 730 smashed by 22 dollars or 22 minutes later buys another four million dollars worth of bitcoin continues to buy and that's after you know 30 purchases throughout the day so there are entities whales countries that are trying to get in and there's just not a lot of Bitcoin to go around. Like right now, there are 21 million Bitcoin that were, will ever be in existence. There are 8 billion people. So everyone right now, if all the Bitcoin was split up and all of it was in circulation, everyone on earth could buy about $112. But there's only about 2 million Bitcoin on exchanges. So 2 million Bitcoin on exchanges means that people could buy about $11 on average in Bitcoin. That's just a very small amount of Bitcoin. I mean, take a look at it from a Bitcoin perspective 0.00025 bitcoin that's nuts there's not much to go around and these entities keep on buying up more and more so what am i talking about when i'm talking about these companies robbing you well they don't want you to hold bitcoin they well they want you to hold it if it's under their management and they want to charge you a fee on that but they want to swallow up as much of this finite resource as possible They want to manipulate you. They want you to be too scared. They will talk about how terrible it is in a bear market so they can buy it cheaply. And because they have massive resources, they can throw billions of dollars at it. So they're robbing you. And, uh, you know, I say rob. They're not actually stealing your Bitcoin from your wallets, but they are manipulating you. They are robbing you blind, as some people might say in a colloquial sense. Um, But they they're just robbing you. They want you to do whatever they say at all times they want you to be too scared too uninformed too stupid so that they can dump on you at the very top if need be in my opinion some of them will probably just hold a lot forever they'll continue to add Uh, but more importantly they'll make sure that you're scared at the bottom for them that makes more sense i think than even dumping on you at the top because they want that aum they they want to have $20 $20 billion in AUM in their trust. They don't want you to start selling it. They want to keep on buying more and more. And they want this very finite, scarce asset. And keep in mind, we're already seeing how this is working. Like the correlation between Bitcoin and tech stocks has fallen to zero. There's correlation from 2020 all the way to 2023. And it just went into the zero category for the first time since 2019. During the bull market, I mean, we had almost a one-to-one correlation at one point. So people are buying up. No matter what's happening in the stock market, Bitcoin is not really paying attention to it. It doesn't matter because we have entities that are swallowing up as much Bitcoin as they can get their hands on, as much debt as they can get. 
They are going and buying more rigs. They're buying more Bitcoin straight up. There are whales that have been waiting, lurking in the shadows to buy, swallow up as much. And BlackRock is out there too, along with 11 other trillion dollar companies. Now they're not trillion dollars in terms of market cap, but they have trillions of dollars or hundreds of billions of dollars in AUM. They have so much money just sitting there waiting to get this approved. So a couple key dates. Right now, they have two days. That's why I said 48 hours on the title. They have two days to get their final updates. And we've gotten, we've gotten news today. I, I've seen on Twitter that a lot of these entities are submitting updates to the SEC. So two days to get their final updates in for the SEC. January 5 to January 10 is the approval window. So we'll probably get news in about a week, maybe a week and a few days that we have approval. Maybe there's some news in between then, but I would probably bank on there not being much news, especially with the holidays. At that point, we may see more ads. Would not be surprised if there's a lot of money spent on ads. You'll probably get ads on these videos that you're watching right now, my video about different ETFs. So keep in mind, they're not necessarily here for, I guess, your benefit. Sure, democratizing Bitcoin, more people can buy. It's great for the price. Honestly, it's great for the price of Bitcoin when more and more entities get in, get invested, get interested. But it's not like they're trying to make it so that everyone can buy a significant amount and become rich. They want to make money off your money. That's their business model. And I've talked about how this is a really good model um, or this is a really good asset for them to make money off of custody, custodying Bitcoin because it's just difficult compared to a lot of other assets. It's really difficult to for people that maybe aren't tech savvy to go buy Bitcoin, send it to their wallet, that kind of thing. So they don't always have your best interest in mind, but if you can kind of align with them and see what they're trying to do, make you can make money from them. You can make money from them not having the kind of access or the, flex, the flexibility we have. So how do you make money? Well, you can see a tidal wave coming. I guess grab a surfboard, like try to, uh, again, weird, weird uh, way of phrasing it, but try to get some Bitcoin right now. Like I've made videos, buy 0.01 Bitcoin, buy 0.00025 Bitcoin, buy $10 worth of Bitcoin, buy 0.1 Bitcoin, uh, get to one Bitcoin. I've made all types of videos talking about different numbers, but just try to get some Bitcoin if you, if you can, um, not financial advice, but get some Bitcoin Grab some other assets too. I uh, have watched several channels that talked about how they're not buying Bitcoin. They think it's dumb to buy Bitcoin because there's so much opportunity in altcoins. So I'm not going to sit here and say you have to buy Bitcoin. I just think Bitcoin's a good risk to reward ratio, especially if you have a significant amount of money you want to put in. It makes sense to me. Um, so I think it'll outperform a lot of other assets. That's why I continue to pile more money into Bitcoin. Um, and by that, I mean, I'm getting paid in Bitcoin for a lot of different things. And I'm just keeping it here because I think that this asset class and that Bitcoin specifically is going to blow up with all this money flooding in. And I'm okay with, uh, the big entities getting in because it's going to pump my bags. I have seen this coming. I'm well positioned and I hope you are too. Let me know your thoughts on this underneath the video. Let me know if you like this kind of style. Um, hopefully I delivered on the title. I'm not trying to be clickbaity here. They are trying to rob you blind in a way. They want you to be scared. They want you to be fearful when they're buying up. They want you to be greedy at the top so they can make, uh, they can make some fees from you. Also, like I said, there is a link to Marjax underneath the video. Definitely check that out. I want to say too, like, this is a little teaser. I, I shouldn't make a full video on this soon. I will. A lot of these entities have access to information that... I'd say a regular investor doesn't have. We're creating something um, at a company that I own part of. Uh, we're creating something to give you a better edge. We haven't gone live with it yet. It's probably going live on January 1, but if you want, try to decide. I'll, I'll put a link to it underneath the video. HG Access, we are getting about, sounds like about 10 other influencers from all across YouTube, um, possibly some big Twitter guys too, in on this, to talk about the market on a weekly basis, live streaming with the group, uh, doing deep dives on certain cryptos, giving alpha that other people don't have. Like as influencers, it's kind of crazy how much information we know. Um, we know when people are advertising, we know who's advertising. I know top 15 
cryptocurrencies that are looking to spend millions of dollars in advertising. I know Top 100. I know gaming coins that are really well known that are doing marketing pushes. And I know it weeks before, weeks before people know it on YouTube. So I know that price is probably going to do pretty well if they're doing a huge marketing push. Now, I have to be careful with what I do. Um, with that in mind, I'm more of a buy and hold investor. I mean, I do some trading on Margex, but what we're trying to do is provide more information to you guys. Let you ask questions. Let you see what's kind of behind the curtain. Because I don't know about you, but I've seen a lot of influencers go on Twitter and talk about their 100x gains, their 50x gains. Um, some project that you've never heard of that they were in early on and you had no idea because, you know, you're just probably watching Twitter. They don't mention it until they have a big bag of it and then it spikes up. What we want to do is give you information before everyone else or at the same time we get it. So we're creating a Patreon for that. Now it is pricier than my Patreon personally, my Patreon where I tell you exactly what I'm buying and selling. I'm going to be still doing my own Patreon, but this is going to be like a, like I said, a weekly live stream with a bunch of different influencers. There's going to be a lot of money thrown at the backside, like trying to create alpha for you, doing alpha reports on different cryptos, depending on what tier you're in. I believe you can also ask for specific cryptos, like have someone research it for you. So I'll leave a link to it underneath the video. We're not going live with it yet because there are just a couple things that we have to do on the backside, but pay attention to that. I'll make a full video on it because I think basically what I said here is going to be really valuable to certain people um, that want that extra edge, especially if you're working with it a decent amount of money. Like the amount that you pay is going to be paid back to you, I think 10x, 100x. Um, within days, you'll make money from it in certain asp in certain circumstances. So be on the lookout for that. I'll leave a link to it underneath the video beneath Marjack. So be on the lookout. Go check it out. Now, of course, if you're not interested, that's fine. I don't care. <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to join. I'm just trying to provide a little bit more alpha uh, for everyone out there. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Hopefully, I didn't rant too long. I'll see you in the next video.